latest episode of the campus comics cast the number one comic book podcast from carbondale illinois <laughs> probably right uh this is dan brown and i'm joined this time by scott reed and mike atchison and we are you know still uh socially distant here on the podcast we're all miles apart from each other doing this online uh for everybody's safety now it turns out but uh <laughs> You know, and we're still kind of doing that at the store, too. So just kind of keep that in mind when you come in. We are open. Uh, we're open Monday through or I'm sorry, Tuesday through Saturday, uh, 11 to 5. We've kind of switched over to the winter hours right now. And uh, we just ask it, you know, of course, in accordance with, you know, the laws right now, you know, wear a mask when you come in. Uh, just, you know, kind of be observant of everybody. Again, it's just about trying to keep everybody safe. We're not trying to infringe on anybody's rights or anything. Just, you know want everybody to have a good time and stay healthy and uh this is going to be our monthly uh, perusal of the previews catalog and this is the november catalog for items that are going to start shipping in january now of course there's always exceptions to that there's going to be merchandise and different things that are advanced solicited that takes a little longer to make than a comic book so you know some of this stuff will be a few months out in the next year and that kind of thing but all this stuff should start shipping in you know january as long as nothing gets shut down again or any more distributor nonsense like we've had this year. So fingers crossed on all that. So uh, we're going to start off with the uh, DC catalog, the which is only online now. It's the DC Connect catalog if you're looking for it. And in honor of Alex Trebek, we're going to say, what is DC? Nice. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, DC is something different this month. Yes, That's it is. Sure, because we've got the big future state event coming, which is taking the place of the mainstream superhero titles for uh, January and February of 2021. And uh, sort of like what they did with the uh, Convergence event a couple of years ago, we're getting a couple months off of the regular continuity superhero books. But some other stuff will still be coming out. Batman and Catwoman is still shipping. We're still getting Rorschach. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically everything that's not in continuity technically with everything else will still be coming out on time. So if you're getting like a mini series or something, that should still be there. Don't sweat that. But we are getting a uh, pretty big upheaval here with all these superhero titles. Yeah. So apparently all the future state stuff is going to derive out of Dark Knight Death Metal issue seven. Correct. I believe so. OK, that is and exactly what I read. Unless yeah. that changes again. Yeah. No kidding. Because uh, it was supposed to tie into the Generation Shattered miniseries, which I think we talked about with the last catalog. And as we're recording this a couple days ago, they just came out and said it wasn't, that they are two separate things. What the change is, we don't know why they've done this, but those are two separate events or storylines now. Well, well, maybe that's what they're going to pull from there. They're going to pull that because uh, uh, in Death Metal 7, there are going to be apparently two epilogues to that story. And I wonder if maybe some of those uh, those two epilogues come from what was going to be in that those books that were pulped. Right. Who knows? So so the, to me, this kind of makes uh, this kind of makes Death Metal Seven like the flashpoint number six uh, of the modern of the modern what we're going to have for the modern DC universe moving forward. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we've got Future State. So we have uh, new versions of a lot of the superheroes. A lot of new status quo here for everybody, but again, it's only going to be temporary till something catches on with fans, and then that will become, you know, the standard for that character is probably how that'll play out. And then I know I know that a lot of the books are going to be either four issue limited series, so twice a month for January, right. February, or two issues. I don't know if those are just going to be in January. I didn't look real close at that. But also the uh, page count's going up, and the price is the price, going up. The price is definitely going up on some of these. 
So it's like uh, like the 64 pages for a lot of the books are going to be priced at $7.99 and then $8.99 for the good old cardstock covers. Yeah. So and then some with like a what a 48 page count are going to be I don't know, I can't remember if they were $5.99 or what, but the the cost for these books is going to be up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So and again, a lot of them are still at the four dollar price point, but they are producing way less superhero books these months. So mm-hmm. apparently they're making that up with the cost. So yeah. they're still uh, getting paid. You know, this is a business, mm-hmm. even though it's an art form that we all love. A lot of people seem to lose sight of that, I think. But I, uh, do, I do feel like the DC Connect issue six does a pretty good job summarizing what's happening in Future State in those first two issues. So there's a lot of good information there. So if you're interested, just search for DC Connect six and then you can you can pull up and read the first, you know, like so the first three pages of that. And you've got some good info about uh, kind of what sets the, I don't know, sets the foundation for what's going to happen with Future State. Or just listen to the last podcast where Dan talked about it. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, so we do have, you know, John Ridley's Batman, you know, Luke Fox Batman is part of this. It's the next Batman in here. Uh, and we are also getting, uh, oh, shoot, what are they? Dark, Dark Detective. Dark Detective. Yeah. Apparently, is the Bruce Wayne story, even though Bruce Wayne's supposed to be dead, but you totally know he's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Dan Mora drawing those issues, so I'm all about that. Dan Mora on a Batman book, I'll buy that for sure. You know, from Once in the Future, um, and other cool covers and stuff. I was kind of surprised that on page four they led with Aquaman. That really. <laughs> You know, surprised me that that's going to be their lead one, especially since wow. that book's not coming out till January 26th. Yeah, but, you know, I think it's just how everybody recognizes the quality of his cinematic <laughs> debut. And that's probably carrying over worldwide, you know, with sales. So, yeah, you definitely want to have that front and center. Nice. Hey, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why his regular title was canceled. And again, it's probably alphabetical. <laughs> well, I alphabetical or, or maybe because, you know, he just recently wasn't his daughter just born in. And, you know, regular continuity and, and her name is Andy Curry and she's the co-star of this issue. So maybe there's they're trying to highlight her, which I think is great. I mean, I never really understood much about the Jackson Hyde Aqu- Aqualad. I almost right. said it like uh, like the Super Friends Aqualad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but I, I, I totally dig the idea of Arthur and Mara's uh, mm-hmm. daughter even being called Aqualass instead of aqua girl so and she's got the red hair instead of the blonde so um i was actually kind of like the way this looks was that issue 54 or 57 that she was born in of the aquaman title do you remember i meant to look that up and i i forgot to. i have not been reading it so i couldn't tell you. it's the only one i mean i picked it up out of the blue or i ordered it out of the blue um because i haven't been reading aquaman but um yeah i, I, I want to say 57 probably Okay, I did mention that as a you know a investment pick a while back in one of our episodes. So I have like three or four copies of it. So I'm hoping that baby jumps. <laughs> um, and then uh, and that comes out January 26th. And on page five, you've got the next Batman. So we're not in alphabetical order because after that you got Catwoman. And this is where you know like Dan was saying, we've got Lucas Fox, uh, which is apparently is DC's worst kept secret. Because uh, they list it several times in here as redacted, um, as if they're not going to say that it's Lucas Fox. Um, and if you have any copies of uh, New 52's Batwing 19 in your collection, you should be pulling those out and, uh, and uh, you know, sell them while the, while the price is good. Because that's, they're going to, they're, they've jumped a little bit previously with all the rumors about uh, the 5G. And, and I think that's just going to, continue to go up just a little bit so uh, this this next batman is for sure lucas fox the uh son of lucius fox yes the son of lucius well, right i i think i think we can all agree on that they're not saying that that's the case so um because they they don't actually say it anywhere in here i don't think but if, it's it's been understood for a while it, it better be, because if it's not, then this is like the thing that DC does when something leaks, is they change the character at the last second, and it's a terrible choice. That's how we right. got, you know, Hawk uh, Monarch back in the day with Armageddon 2001. Right. And, you know, um, 
what was the other one? Oh, uh, Huntress, Batgirl, back in the day during No Man's Land, and stuff that just leaks early, or the fans put the clues together too soon. Yeah. You and know, that was, that was before the internet, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Both those were. Well, I mean, the internet was around for No Man's Land, but not like it is now. Right. But, uh, yeah. No, I believe I. the story I always heard about the Armageddon 2001 thing was that it was somebody on a tour of the offices discovered it, and that's how it got out. And so DC quit doing tours after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on to page six, you got the second issue of Next Batman, and they're introducing a new character here in this issue named Siren. Um, so, yeah. so, which I don't know, just something to throw out there. I mean, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of new characters introduced oh, yeah. here in these in these issues of Future State. So if you're a first what, appearance person, this is gonna be an expensive month for you. Yeah, because you don't know what's going to stick to the wall and what's not. And exactly. And I, but this is one of them I have written down as a, a definitely a must pick up the next Batman uh, issues uh, because they're written by John Ridley and I love Nick Darrington's art. So um, either way, regardless of who the first appearances uh, are in there, I'm going to be picking these up. Yeah, and then that Batman book is going to be one. It's out on January 5th, so that's going to be one of the first books um that that comes out and then on page seven you've got uh you've got the batman superman and this is where we still have bruce wayne and clark kent in future state correct i know it's bruce wayne for sure it looks like it from the cover <laughs> yeah but that doesn't necessarily mean anything no but um, yeah, you can say you know bruce wayne and uh because they talk about clark being in on war world later on so right um yeah, so they got, say last son of Krypton, and it doesn't look like Jonathan from the cover here. No, like, but there's I, I, I was kind of looking for the cape, but he's got the underwear on, so it almost has to be yeah. Clark. Yeah. And yeah. then page, uh, page eight, you've got Catwoman number one, and this is going to introduce a new sidekick. And then I had there's talks about her trusty band, her trusty band of strays. Is that something that's previously in her continuity, or is that something new as well? I mean, I think she's kind of worked with like, you know, a network in Gotham before, but I don't think it was anything that clearly defined, you know. Right. Anything. But yeah, again, that could be something they build into continuity after this. Right. And then, then on page nine, you've got Dark Detective, and Grifter is in. Uh, it's going to be in Dark Detective number one, and this is apparently Bruce Wayne. Like, you yeah. know, so we're back. The world thought Bruce Wayne was dead, yeah. but no. Somebody forgot to tell Bruce, apparently. So, <laughs> And then uh, the second issue that's also going to ship, and for the Jason Todd fans, then that's one that you want to pick up. Is Jason Todd a backup in the first one as well? I didn't see his name on the first I issue. Think, is that Grifter in that one, maybe? Yeah, Grifter I in the first they, one. I think they're switching up the backup stories. Yeah. And I guess we should mention that that's where a lot of the extra page count is going to come from for these books, is a lot of them are going to have one or two backup stories. <laughs> You know, so we'll yeah, probably get the regular length story and then one or two backups to to fill the balance of the books. So like the Dark Detective Two is a forty-eight pager. Right. Yeah, Grifter is the backup in the first issue, mm -hmm. and it looks like Red Hood is the backup in the second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then page eleven, you got Flash number one, where apparently all the Flashes are depowered except for Wally West. So they're making Wally the bad guy again. Right. So I, who knows? Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I, like that, I like that logo, though, on the cover. I'll give it that. Oh, you know, I'm, not logo? Crazy, yeah. I'm not crazy about that, you know, apparent storyline with Wally. But yeah, yeah everything I like on. everything that, that this promises to be, except Wally being the bad guy again. I just yeah. I the guy, man, give it give him a break. But you know what? Uh, I, I probably will pick this up anyway. I love Dale Eaglesham's art. so. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, you know, I'm not speaking real specific about any of these books because I feel like I might be saying the same thing over and over again, but I will be picking up all these books. I'm getting all this Future State stuff. I'm really interested in a lot of these concepts, mm -hmm. seeing where they're going. Again, I was talking on here before. I think you'll see, you know, probably somewhat of a repeat of Convergence or at least the consequences of Convergence sales-wise because I can't go into a store with, you know, a dollar book section and finding some convergent books thrown in there. <laughs> I think really everybody kind of overordered on those books and got bit. And I think now we're going to see lower orders on these than we did the last time DC did an event like this. So yeah. 
I mean, if there's something you want, get it. You know, let us yeah. know at the store. Tell Mike no to order it. You know, and just like there's gonna be there's gonna be something that comes out of this. Yeah. There's gonna be some new character's first appearance here, or some you know thing they're setting up for a bigger event or something. But yeah, there's going to be some hard to find book that comes out of all this. Then uh, page 12, you got Future Straight Green Lantern, uh, where it looks like we have all the lanterns except for Hal. I didn't see Hal's name mentioned in this one anywhere, but all the rest of them, Guy Gardner and Jessica Cruz and John Stewart, and uh, um, they're all there. <laughs> even uh, even Gnort. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind Joe- of okay with that. Like, I think Hal's yeah. the least interesting Green Lantern, <laughs> so I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> And then we're getting Sojourner what, I, Moline. I don't know how you would pronounce that last name. Yeah, who sure. was a, from Far Sector Number One? Yeah. So she's kind of making the transition over to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. If she was considered DC proper previously. No, or that's it's part of the young animal, and I yeah. think. I mean, I think they le- left it open for her to be able to part be part of regular continuity, and she's been popular enough. Um, Jamal Campbell's art on that book has been fantastic. Anyway, but. Uh, the design is good, and um, we'll see her on the cover of uh, Justice League here shortly. Yeah, and I think I think the rumor too was that she was going to end up being 5G Green Lantern. Right. Was the original yeah. plan. Then uh, 13, you got Harley Quinn, which is just more Harley Quinn. I don't really feel like anything's changing uh, yeah. with that character initially. Um, and then 14, you got Immortal Wonder Woman. I wonder where they got the idea for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but this but this is Diana Prince, right? So, but yeah. we also have a what is it a backup story from? Uh, yeah, there's a Nubia backup story. Yeah, in. Nubia, whose her first appearance was in Wonder Woman 206. So, um, so it goes way back. So that's kind of a deep dive there for, you know, fans of Wonder Woman. Um, and Justice League. And it's the new Justice League, right? So we've got the new Batman, who may or may not be <laughs> Lucas Fox. And then we haven't mentioned, uh, was it Yara? Oh, gosh, I forgot her name already. Well, Yara Floor. She's yeah, a Brazilian the, Wonder Woman. The Brazilian Wonder Woman. Um, and I, one of these issues is going to be apparently her first appearance. If it's not, I'm, I'm going to guess that it's going to be in that Dark Knight Death Metal 7 as one oh, of those yeah. epilogue stories. So yeah. you if you you've got to pick those up if you're any type of a speculator at all. So because I mean, I don't think she has a appearance. So it's either going to be there. It's going to be in her Wonder Woman book because the Justice League issue comes out. Oh, I had the date. Well, here it's right here on the on the page. Uh, it comes out January 12th. But Wonder Woman one comes out January 5th. So assuming that they stay on time, then. Uh, yeah. the, the the Wonder Woman one will beat the Justice League by a week. All right. Um, okay. Sixteen. Kara Zor-El. Now this is just the this is just Supergirl, right? And now in the Superwoman role. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, this one. Okay. And I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about this too, Mike. But uh, Future State Legion of Superheroes. Um, oh. I'm looking forward to this one. Because of the mention of the Legion of Substitute Heroes. So that uh that special that they did many years ago is like one of my favorite DC comics. And uh so I'm uh I don't know. I mean there's only a handful of Legion of Substitute Hero appearances, aren't aren't there? Well, I know that they were a mainstay in the in the regular titles over the years. It's just as far as uh uh having their own specials, there might have only been that one or two of them. Um they, you have the Legion Academy, but before that it was the Legion of Substitute Hi- Superheroes, and they they were it was really a cool concept in which you know you 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 got to graduate uh, if you were lucky to the Legion either because you're you you met you met muster or you passed muster or if you one of the Legion rules was you can't uh, duplicate any other Legionnaire's powers, so uh, you might have to wait until somebody like you know, Ultra Boy leaves or retires or something. That was, that was the reason, like, Lightning Lad's sister, Lightning Lass, they changed her power to be Light Lass. Uh, but anyway, I, yeah, they, they've they been around for quite a while, and they're a very popular concept. I'm I'm probably going against my better judgment and 
will try to squint as best as I can to get through <laughs> Mr. Riley's art, but um, I, hey, you know what? Uh, open-minded. <laughs> Uh, page 18, you got Nightwing, and this is still going to be Dick Grayson. He's going to be held up or holding up in uh, an abandoned Arkham Asylum. So there's that. And then uh, Robin. And Nick, Nicola Scott drawing the Nightwing book, too. And she's kind of been posting some art online, too, from that. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. And then Robin is going to go is going to go back to Tim Drake. Yeah. So uh, for Robin Eternal, issue one. This will be Tim this will be Tim Drake, you say? Yeah, according to this, that is unless Tim Drake has anything to say about it. So Tim Drake and Spoiler are, are going to be in that uh, are going to be Robin for future Good. State. So good. Uh, uh, page twenty, you got Shazam number one, and I guess it's still Billy Batson. So uh, we kind of had the same uh, Shazam, and then uh, Suicide Squad. It's really weird because Shazam seems like the kind of character you could easily do a legacy character on. You know what I mean? You just say, hey, here's the next, you know, next champion. Guardian. Yeah. yeah. Looks like Miron on the cover there. Is that, yeah. is that who that is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which one? Yeah. The guy with the big mouth and the green. The green, uh, yeah. Him on his chest. Yeah. Okay. From Underworld Unleashed back in the day. Uh, I've never read that. It's a good so. series, man. <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad on page uh, 21. And uh, it's an interesting uh, team for Suicide Squad, at least from the looks here. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful. I know that I, I need to go back and read this. I know you guys have said it's been really, really good. The, the current Suicide Squad run, which is going to uh, end here soon. I'm hoping that that will, after Future State, they'll, they'll you know, revamp that and bring that back with a new number yeah. one. So, um, yeah, It's been a really good book. Yeah. Page 22, you got Superman of Metropolis, and this is where we get uh, Jonathan Kent uh, as Superman. No cape and no red underwear. So, and of course, his first appearance was in the, you know, Convergence, you know, uh, Superman Convergence issue two. So, um, and it's going to have backup stories of the, the Shiloh Norman Mr. Miracle. Yeah. Um, who was like an apprentice to the Scott Free Mr. Miracle. Oh, in the original uh, run, even yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it goes back to Mister Miracle issue fifteen. Yep. So, um, and then the, the the Grant Morrison run of Seven Soldiers of Victory, I think uh, they he expanded on that concept quite a bit. And I don't remember what year that was, the mid two thousands probably. I had that entire Seven Soldiers series in my two read pile. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So, <laughs> yeah. it was good. It, it was off the beaten path, but mm-hmm. it was good. And uh, we're getting a Guardian back up in this, too. And I think that's the, yeah, that's the Manhattan Guardian, again, from the Seven Soldiers run. So going to be in this issue, too. So if you're a fan of that. Yeah. Is he the one with the yellow shield? He is. Like with the helmet. The, yeah, yeah. And I think he's the reason why Captain America had to change the, his, uh, the shape of his shield. No, yeah, that's, he goes, that's the shield from Archie. Oh, is it the shield? Oh, yeah, okay. The shield was the reason that uh, Captain America had to change. Ah. But you're right that he's the, the, the guardian that that character goes back to the, the golden age and yeah. he was Jim Harper. It was the guardian and the newsboy legion. So it was a Kirby and Simon uh, creation and, and concept and uh, non powered, but street level type guy. Then uh, page 23, you've got Superman versus Imperious Lex a little, you know, play on words there. Uh, and I think this is the John Kent um, Superman. And I noticed that Lex is wearing a mask of his face. You know, you got that little line going around. Oh, I didn't notice yeah. that first time. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something going to go on. There's something going on there with uh, Lex in, in that issue. But anybody that's a fan of Mark Russell, you, they're going to want to pick this up. I can just see this yeah. this being... Um, have a lot of political intrigue to it and and uh satire and then page 24 you got superman worlds of war so apparently uh superman this is the clark kent superman nat My, no mike's really excited yeah, it was yeah he's clapping <laughs> mike he's loves that concept <laughs> <laughs> going to, to war world is it not war world uh yeah, War World. It is, it is was, a War World. Yeah, I thought I was getting Planet Hulk messed up and mixed up in there or something. So, um, I do like the covers where they got more of the 
the old school S uh, on Superman. Yeah. Uh, well, that that's is kind of like that what, Kingdom Come version there. Mm-hmm. It looks like a combination of the Kingdom Come version and the Red Sun, you know, with the the hammer and sickle. Um, just that, that design with the gray instead of the blue or the light gray. And I mean, I'm, I'm a bit, I, I will love this, especially with you got, uh, Mikhail Hanin, uh, art on it, but, okay. So, you know, I feel like I've read this story before with, uh, the war wheel or not the war wheel, but the war war world. (laughs) Um, but it's, it's one that's usually it's, it's one that you can actually dip back into that concept many times and still have fun with it. What was it like? Action Comics Annual Number Two or something like that from like yeah. the late '80s. That was a good story. And again, they did this sort of thing on the Justice League cartoon years back too. So yeah, yeah. it's just enough concept that again, it's also like, why didn't they make a Superman video game like this? You know, <laughs> right. like, there's your answer to overpowered Superman or whatever. Yeah, anybody that that wants to cry foul saying we've we've read that story, we've but they need to remember that a concept does not make the story and it's, you know, you have to write around it. So I'm looking forward to this one for sure. And also in that issue, we're getting a new uh, black racer. So oh, that'll be good. Yeah. So yeah. new, uh, um, a female black racer. So now, Wait, whoa, 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 a female black racer. You say, yes. On top of that, the black racer, a girl raised from the slums of war world, to be one of its okay. competitors turns betrayal into a crusade to fight okay. for the freedom of others like her. Okay, fellow podcasters here, let's go back to the uh, fan casting for the fourth world that we did this past uh-huh. summer. And I believe, no, I am certain that I chose a female actress, a female actor to play Black Racer. Oh, well, there you go. And All they're right. psychic. They're listening. They're stealing our ideas, guys. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> we got to give this stuff away for free. <laughs> okay, now, now page 25, you got the Superman Wonder Woman, and this is John Kent and oh, I've Yara, uh, Yara Floor. Now, here John Kent has a cape <laughs> on both on both the covers. On the other book, he didn't have a cape. So I don't know if just your artist got their uh, got their wires crossed or what on that. So Milk wrote on. Yeah. <laughs> so well, there is there's, a, there's another cover where he has a K. Oh, it's the Imperious Lex variant where he also has a cape. It looks like. Okay. Oh yeah. Because that doesn't the the variant there really doesn't look like John Kent. Okay, so is that one actually John Kent in? I, well, the rest that's the thing. The face and the hair looks like it could be like an older Clark, Clark but the yeah. suit looks more like John's in here, so who knows? Yeah, who knows? They yeah. probably didn't even have a solid idea of what they wanted to do as far as costuming yet. And Yeah, who knows? Well, I like maybe. the costume of the new Wonder Woman, though. I really do. Yeah. Real quick on the Superman Wonder Woman issue. Uh, in the background there, it looks like we've got Solaris, the uh, villain from uh, DC One Million which is like the uh, intelligent son villain that uh, is supposed to fight the Superman dynasty throughout the centuries. Oh, good callback. So, um, Page uh, 26, you got uh, Swamp Thing number one, and this is a new Swamp Thing, which I'm assuming that this is going to be a Swamp Thing that's coming out of, uh, out of Death Metal because he kind of has the, I don't know, like the, the horns. Um, yeah. So yeah. I don't know where that uh, where this version of Swamp Thing first. So you know, Alec Holland was the last Swamp Thing that I read, even back in New Fifty Two. So I yeah. don't know where we got a new Swamp Thing at. Well, you know, now that we're talking about this, there was the um, what was it called, the Legend of Swamp Thing Halloween special that DC just did, which features several different versions of Swamp Thing in that story. So that might be a worth. It might be a book worth checking out and looking back at in case that's the first appearance of this character. Again, I'm not saying that it is, but you know, there's to, a to find out. You know, I read that. Uh, I can't remember though if there was if there was sort of a future version that was you know uh, interpreted in there. I'll have to go back and pull that back out. Yeah, I just know there were several in there. So I mean, I'm not saying this is one of them, but right. you know, at least seems to kind of play into that theme, if nothing else. And then page 27, you got Teen Titans, and we got another first appearance here, the first comic appearance yeah. of Red X, which I guess is a character from Teen Titans Go. 
Well, from the original Teen Titans, well, not the original, but the Teen Titans cartoon of, you know, the early 2000s. Right. Well, that was called Teen Titans Go, wasn't it? It's what it says oh, here. Teen anyway. Titans Go was the newer cartoon. Okay, so this is previously seen only in the hit animated TV series Teen Titans Go. So Well, they're wrong. They're wrong? Okay, all right. Well, good. Okay. Uh, and again, there was, well, okay, the comic for that se- that animated series, the comic tie-in was called Teen Titans Go. And I'm going to bet that character probably did appear in that run of books. Again, I haven't read them all. But, so, but in the regular continuity, this is going to be, or, you know, as close to regular continuity as this is, this will be the first DC sort of appearance of Red X. So it'll kind of be like the Phantasm one from yeah. like Batman, Catwoman, that type of a of an yeah. appearance. So uh, then on page uh, 28, here we have Wonder Woman, Future State Wonder Woman number one, which may potentially be the first appearance of Yara Floor if she doesn't show up in, you know, Dark Knight's Death Metal 7. Um, right. This book is going to be out January 5th. So um, it is something to, you know, definitely consider picking up. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be a regular length story, thirty-two pages. So yeah, but again, just you, pick it up for the Joel Jones story and art in this. That'll be oh wonderful. no kidding. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I mean, it's just this this preview here is just beautiful. I'm and I like the I, I like the concept that they're they're placing her in Brazil or you know in a it's whole Amazon different Amazon. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's the last future state book that they're soliciting in this catalog. So, um, so we're on yep. what page uh, 28. So, um, you got 20, what, 25, 26, uh, uh future state yeah. books solicited here. I want to say, what is it? I think it's like between 52 and 56 books altogether over the two months. So, it, and again, DC was publishing 52 superhero books a month, you know, not that long ago. So, you know, about half of the regular superhero output they were doing not too long ago. Well, I I think that's actually a good move on their part um, because I think the there's can be a potentially a little bit too much glut in the market with too many uh, oh, titles. Yeah, for sure. So I this looks like a much more you know manageable selection of books um, from DC. Yeah. So now the books that are coming out January fifth are Wonder Woman one, Swamp Thing one. Uh, the oh the John Kent Superman book I didn't write down the title of that one for some reason Superman of Metropolis yeah yeah that's it the Harley Quinn book the Flash book the next Batman issue one so those are the January fifth books so those will be your your I guess after the epilogues from Death Metal seven those will be your your first books for um for future state so watch for those just after the new year hopefully dc will stay on time uh, yeah. with us. so, um, so dan or scott are, are there any overall thoughts on future state and and what happens after it and and is i mean we just are gonna rely on the on the reaction of fans and as to whether any of these characters um you know you know, take up any space in the DC universe. I was surprised at how few new characters are actually taken on these major roles. I was really yeah. expecting, you know, you know, something, somebody completely new for all the main characters. And really, as far as I know, the only really new character is, is going to be wonder woman. Cause all the rest of the characters have a previous appearance someplace in, in, in DC continuity. Um, well, by the way, uh, Andy Curry did appear first in uh, 57, Aquaman 50, 57. Okay. All right. Um, I think we'll have a better sense of all that after these books come out and kind of, you know, what the reaction is to them. Um, I just, before we get off the topic of Future State real quick, I just want to go back to this sort of a teaser image that's been online for a little while now, and it's sort of the cover to this DC Connect catalog. Uh, because under uh, John Kent Superman there, we have, um, oh, I can't think of his name now, but he was uh, the a member of the Hyper Clan from uh, Grant Morrison's first JLA story. Right. The monthly book with Howard Porter, you know, where it was the white Martians coming to Earth as superheroes to save the world, and then they're found out at the end. You know, we've had the white Martians show up since then, but we haven't seen any of, like, their sort of Hyper Clan identity since then so it's kind of interesting to see him in there 
And again, I'm just blanking on that character's name. Uh, man, I'm man, it's like Primac or man, I, I get all their names screwed up now. <laughs> well, we had Protex and um, um, I, I I can't remember them all either. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, while you're thinking over here on the far left of that same Pro- image, Protex, I think is the one. Is that supposed to be Black Racer? Or is that a different character? On the far left, under Batman's right arm. Which which page is that? That's the cover of the DC Connect uh, catalog. So it's the. Oh, that uh, looks like under Batman's arm looks like a dude to me. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like, wearing skis, but also has some kind of lightsaber or something in there. Yeah. Um. Uh. I know she didn't say laser sword. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. We know what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, I did also uh, the first appearance of um, of uh, Jackson Hyde is actually in DC Rebirth number one. So if you bought a bunch of those, uh, there's still hope. All right. <laughs> okay, you no, that's a. It looks like that's a character from the Legion of Superheroes book. Okay. He's on the cover there. Which one? Okay, yeah, I see. So I'm not sure. Unless Black Racer appears in multiple, you know, titles this in right. January. So, um, anything else, Future State, before we go on? I think that's it. All right. Uh, well, my next thing in the catalog is not until page actually 32, so it's not far ahead. So, you guys got anything for 32? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, page um, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, page 32, we are going to get a, a bonus issue of <laughs> the Adventure Batman, the Adventure Continues. Uh, so it's going to be up to eight issues instead of seven. It was originally six, and then they got extended yeah. to seven, and it's eight. So yeah, we'll maybe we'll get a it. bonus ninth. Yeah, we'll see if it's not. And again, I'd be fine if they just made this a regular book. You know, I don't know why they won't just say that. Maybe, they, maybe they're testing the marketing to see if everybody thinks it's only got one more, they'll keep buying it. <laughs> It's, it's been good though, but again, a, an example of not regular continuity superhero book that's still going to be coming out. You know, like the Batman White Knight Harley Quinn that you know is on the next page. So, have you been picking that up, Dan? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't read it yet. I'm behind on everything because I just you know kind of wrapped up Inktober the other day, so I'm behind on my reading and my shows and everything else. So yeah, but I, I had. Just- I haven't read anything of White Knight that's been bad, so. Right. Page 34, we've got the second issue of uh, uh, Batman Catwoman by Tom King. And you can kind of see Phantasm in the in the background on that uh, on that cover, on one of the covers anyway. And then on page uh, 36. Did we talk about this last time, though, to, is, is why this is Black Label? Is, is there a distinct reason? No, I don't know of any. I don't know of anything they said that puts it as black label. Um, yeah, I just don't Dan, quite get it. Anything? No. Uh, I mean, there's always the whatever the controversial decision Tom King was going to make that they had to run up the ladder with Warner Brothers. You know, if it wasn't the death of Alfred, you know, that might still be something crazy coming on in this book. You know, and they might have decided, hey, we don't want that to be continuity now. You know, right. or it may have just been a. This may have been a way of appeasing Tom King of taking him off Batman, and saying, "Hey, we're going to make this a more, you know, kind of deluxe, more of a prestige kind of book." Yeah, that that probably makes yeah. most sense to me. And, we, and we'll yeah. what is it? We'll raise the dollar by a buck too. So, mm-hmm. you know, sure. raise a little extra. Buck, so. <laughs> okay. Page thirty-six. You got the final issue of a uh, deceased dead planet. So if you're reading that series, you'll be able to wrap that up in January. I think a cover full of Amazos is an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, by the way, if anything should be black label, you'd think it'd be deceased. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> I've really been enjoying that. Oh, yeah. All that, that, that's been good. Uh, page 41. You got the final issue of The Last God. Uh, also, another DC Black Label title. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, you guys, okay, so on page 44, unless you guys got something before 44. Go ahead. All right, so Mal Duncan. And I may have asked this question before. Is that a new character? Is that an existing character? No, he's been in multi. He first appeared in the original run of Teen Titans, and that run had a had a had a a, 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 hi, a hiatus from its Silver Age uh, run, and then it did probably several years it went without being published, and then in the mid seventies it resumed and brought in Karen Duncan and Mal Duncan, and I don't remember exactly the order of you know what they in which they appeared and what um as what characters but she obviously is bumblebee you can see this on the mm-hmm. cover of this other history of the dc universe but mal had he had definitely a case of I- identity crisis because he was everything from the guardian to uh the hornblower to gabriel to just mal and uh he never did really catch on but he has a pretty distinct place in the um you know the the history of the Teen Titans as a as an African American um, character, uh, and they just never. I, that's why I'm so excited to get this uh, both of these issues. Let's see what, what I just thought it was odd that they named Bumblebee, but they didn't give the, the hero name for Mal Duncan. So it kind of just threw me there. So I feel like it's just a Jean Grey kind of thing. Yeah, I think they kind of come up decided that you know what as a as opposed to all of those other you know, uh, uh, names that he had would just stick with his real name. <laughs> uh, just real quick, going back to mad, I just wanted to bring up this uh, article I saw the other day talking about, uh, I guess the Tom Selleck show blue bloods has been on for 10 years now. And the uh, producers were upset that they never got a mad magazine parody. <laughs> so, so they, so they commissioned some old mad artists and writers to make like a six page, parody of the blue blood show called blue duds <laughs> and uh, there's some art there's some art online you can find i don't think they've got the whole thing because it was like just a gift for the cast and crew but there's a really good shot of tom Selleck, like alfred e newman style that looks really good like it looks way wow. better than you would think it <laughs> uh, page 45 got issue four of rorschach so that tom king story uh, continues. Sounds like just about everything other than uh, uh, Future State is Tom King this month. <laughs> any any review by either one of you guys on this? I, I had the first issue, but I haven't read it yet. I have not read yeah, it yet either. Same, same deal. It's on the reading pile. I'm I'm gonna get to it. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We need we need to schedule to do a review of uh, of uh, Strange Adventures, so I will sit down yes. and read those issues. I was gonna bring that oh, up man. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 54 is my next thing. Go ahead. Wow, okay. How come you guys aren't talking about DC? You guys are the DC guys, and I'm the one talking about all the DC stuff. Well, it's, well, just, it's all... You've just been... Me. You've been leading the conversation. It's not that we haven't had anything to say. <laughs> I, so I'm, I repeat the... I repeat the same stuff. I'm like, okay, the Amethyst trade paperback, I've enjoyed that uh, series. It's a... Uh, it got... I don't know if it was originally intended to be a mini series. Um, or if it was just, you know, a victim of this sort of, uh, readjustment this past fall with DC, but I've enjoyed Amy Reader's, uh, storytelling and her art. Um, so I recommend that. How's that, Scott? There we go. All right. So page 54, you got a trade for Ex Machina. Um, now Oscar Isaacs has been attached to a project with this book. I mean, yes, he's, no? he's, in, he's in everything else. He might as well yeah. be. But I guess what are they going to call this whenever it gets released in theaters? Cause they won't be able to call it ex machina. Cause that's already been used. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. So anyway, so yeah, so that might be something you're not familiar wow. with this uh, world. Want to get in on the, you know, get in. Here's uh, the second trade or second compendium. So you have to track down the first one. Um, and then uh, <laughs> page 56, I just have a comment about this, uh, this Hellblazer cover. When I first looked at it, I thought uh, Constantine was doing a spit take, um, <laughs> but it's just smoke. So <laughs> yeah. it looks like somebody just told him a joke as he so, was taking yeah, a drink. Yeah, he's spitting it out, spitting out his drink. <laughs> uh, and then hey, uh, go back, go back one page, Scott, to uh, the Green Arrow, eighty years of the Emerald Archer uh, deluxe edition hardcover. I only mention that because we we try to um, once in a while look. Uh, review our favorite stories of characters when they hit these uh 
milestone years. So that may be something we can do in a future episode. Makes sounds good to me. I'm I've always been a big right fan now. of Oliver Queen. On uh, page 60, we've got the Tales from the Dark Multiverse trade. And again, this is collecting sort of those first wave of uh, Dark Multiverse specials they did that were all one shots that, you know, were sort of dark takes on sort of the event stories of DC. But, you know, I liked all of those first ones they did. The Hush, the new Hush one just came out. But again, I haven't read that yet. Uh, 61. There's the uh, V for Vendetta book and mask set. Now, that's been out for a while, so I'm assuming that yeah. this is stock that DC got back from Diamond, uh, and now they're just resoliciting it. So um, they're just—it's like they're calling it the new edition. Yeah, yeah. I know Mike um, has had a couple of these. You know, I bought one, and I think at you bought one too. So and we, uh, yes, yeah, we actually we split, split it. it. <laughs> yeah, because I took the mask. So I can have yeah. two of them. <laughs> but anyway, so I guess you can still order this. So if you need your either your Guy Fox mask or your V for Vendetta na- mask or your anonymous mask, this is your chance. So and plus you know, you and I think really I, now story. it's it's you know how you just have it's the opposite opposite of shopper's remorse. When I don't get something that I should have, and I'm regretting not going ahead and just keeping the mask. So now I'll probably buy this whole thing all over again. Would you like me to bring you back the mask? No, 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 no. You <laughs> need to have two. Okay. Yes. I have one on both. I have one on my in my classroom. I have one on my desk. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great prop. And I mean, it's kind of freaky, too. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think the rest of the catalog is toys. So I don't have anything to say. I'm done with DC. So. And again, it's, it looks like a lot of uh, action figures that has, have already been in here. But I see a lot of them are noted with this low inventory <laughs> remaining. So um, get them now kind of thing. If you're wanting, if you've been sitting on some of these figures, you know, wanting to pick them up. Because, uh, yeah, so, you know, um, you see, you know, Midtown is dropping being a DC distributor. And I think some of uh, what Diamond was still carrying is going to be, that's going to be wrapping up at the end of the year. So. Who knows what DC distribution is going to look like here in the new year. Hopefully everything goes good. Uh, as far as the store goes, we've, you know, had relatively few bumps considering, you know, so hopefully that's the case. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen going forward. So, you know, there's yeah. statues here, you know, and things like that. If you've been eyeing any of these, now's probably the time to get them. Um, likewise, on the uh, DC Universe app, uh, they were having a big clearance sale on that uh, store that's exclusive to the app, too. I picked up a couple statues dirt cheap the other day, too. So if you've got that, you know, do that now, because I believe they are opening a new store when the uh, app changes to the DC Universe Infinite app. So. We ready for Marvel? I think so. All right. Um, I will try to go fast through this <laughs> but obviously marvel in january is continuing uh king and black um and on top of that marvel since they now have acquired the license for alien uh they have a lot of variant covers that have uh, the xenomorphs um, right. or on them so uh, you just have to whenever i go past something you want to talk about you're just gonna have to stop me so i'm just gonna go all right yeah, okay so real quick with those alien variants i'm seeing a lot of those online i don't think i've seen all of them in this catalog that i've seen online so yeah. maybe i don't know if they weren't done in time for the catalog or what but look those up online too there's some pretty yeah, good ones i made a note where they either i noticed them or whatever you know just to just to mention them so venom issue 32 is getting a uh getting an alien uh variant uh, then we have uh, King Black Gwenum. So uh, Gwenum has got apparently a unique relationship with the symbiotes. So uh, she's got a three-issue series uh, starting in uh, January. Then on page four, uh, we have the Thunderbolts. And uh, that's a very macho-looking version of Batroc um, on the, for the Thunderbolts there. It's not uh, it's not quite uh, what we usually see for Batroc. Um, but, uh, so we got King and Black uh, Thunderbolts. Um, now, Diamond specifically mentioned this King and Black uh, Black Knight one shop as one of their one shot as one of their uh, gems of the month, and, a, um, and another really cool Dan Mora cover there too. So, mm-hmm. 
So, and I guess it feels like the timing's off on this one just a little bit. Probably should have been a bit closer to the Eternals movie, which got pushed back to next November. Um, and they give us some preview art uh, for the interiors as well. Uh, page uh, page six, I think. Uh, no, page eight, excuse me. Uh, we've got the third issue of the Symbiote Spider-Man written by Peter David. And we've got the Captain Marvel Monica Rambeau making an appearance in this issue. So, uh, Dan, are you reading this? I'm not. I hear. I keep hearing good things about it. I'm always okay. like, oh, should I pick this up? But here's the thing: is I thought my understanding was Symbiote Spider-Man was a period piece. I, I think you are. That's why I think it is black suit Spider-Man. So how was that tying into King and Black? Well, well, I, I, a lot of stuff I think is tying into King and Black that maybe is just ancillary. So there's probably some yeah. mention of the symbiote in some shape, form, or fashion that has some reference to. It, it's to me, it's like the crisis tie-ins where the sky turns a color, and that's the right. extent of the of the tie-in, you know. So. But again, I could. I mean, I feel like this is a good. If you're going to do that, it's a good opportunity to do a prequel, sort of like setting up something that happens in King of Black. You know, something that happened years ago when he still had the black suit, or his the black suit triggered something, you know, that led to King and Black. Oh, absolutely. I, and I think a lot of it's just tying in stuff just because it's coming out this month and they said, oh, hey, sure. add add a page that does something yeah. and we'll make it a King and Black and hopefully bump the sales or whatever. So um, page uh, nine, we've got a, a King and Black issue three also has an alien uh, variant cover. Uh, page 10, we have uh, a character that I had not seen previously, Octavia Vermees. I thought maybe that was a new character, but apparently she showed up in issue two of Spider-Woman and apparently quote unquote died in issue three. So it didn't take them long to bring her back. No. So, she, so she's a Hydra, uh, Hydra agent. Of course, you know, with Spider-Woman having her history uh, in Hydra. Uh, page 11, uh, Felicia Hardy in Black Cat issue two gets the anti-venom. So uh, tie back to that quasi hero villain from, you know, a while back. Uh, something that really upsets me on page 12, uh, we've got King and Black Return to the Valkyries. It's not the Valkyries coming back that bothers me, but the, the, they're going to try to bring the Sentry back. Ugh. Well, I tell you uh, what bothers me on the, on this is uh, they're listing King and Black Return of the Valkyries number two, two. and then on the next mm -hmm. page is King and Black Recur Return of the Valkyries number one. Yeah, I'm interested to see if that's that way in the printed catalog. <laughs> it, it's in the one I'm holding right here. Oh, okay. So it's in the – okay. So I was looking at it digital, so... No, no, it is here live in four colors. Okay, all right. So now we have the answer to that question. But Jane Foster and the Valkyries, and I assume we'll get Brunhild, and, uh, and uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of the new uh, Valkyrie from Thor. You know, so they're introducing... Is it Hildegard? Is that right? That's the name that's there. So I assume that that's Hildegard. Um, oh, Danny Moonstar's in it, too. Oh, like, a former wow. Valkyrie herself. I had no idea. That's kind of cool. I hadn't noticed that. Good catch. Um, page third. No, we already talked about that one. Page 20 is my next thing. You guys got anything before 20? I don't think so, no. All right. So page, I got to find it. 1920. Oh, so actually that's done with King and Black. So anything else to say about King and Black? I'm still waiting well, on Johnny Cash to show up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is a resolicit nonstop Spider-Man number one. This was originally like in the April catalog. Yeah. Um, so if you were wondering where your copy of nonstop Spider-Man was, well, it's apparently coming out in January. So, um, so I don't see a release date on the page. Am I just missing it? I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't have one. Yeah. Okay. I don't. Um, I don't see it. So maybe it's on like the order form. Yeah. I don't know if they showed this one before, but they are listing a die cut variant cover by Chris Bocciolo here. And I'm not sure, you know, what the die cut is on that, but again, it feels real nineties <laughs> you know, sort of gimmick cover. So we'll see what that is when it comes out. Well, I'm sure it's the Spider-Man. And then when you open it up, these guys that are around him or something else. So yeah. I'd bet money on it. Page 22. Uh, you got a new Iron Fist series uh, written by Larry Hama, and Larry Hama was like a fairly early writer, uh, not the original writer, but a fairly early writer uh, for the character back in the Marvel premiere days. And of course, he's probably best known for writing G.I. Joe. Yeah. So, 
um, it'll be good to see his take on the character again. I guess I shouldn't say. Uh, and then David Wachter, um, I don't know that he's done a lot of work for Marvel. Um, he's a name that pops up from time to time. So he's going to be doing the um, have the artist duties uh, on this series. It's a little stylized on the artwork. Um, and there's a variant alien cover uh, for that book as well. About Larry Hama, I, did, I just realized, or I found out something recently. I was going through some of my old Super Friends comic books from the 70s and early 80s, and he was actually an editor on Super Friends before his G.I. Joe days, Larry Hama. Well, he had, um, <laughs> according to a website that's no longer around because they shut down, um, he had a credit in uh, Weird World. It was like a DC title. Yeah, yeah. And then... <laughs> And then I went and talked to him at a, a convention in uh, Louisville. He was there one year and I had him to sign this book. And he's like, I don't think I did anything in this book. <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> this website said that you did. He's like, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. Weird, weird, weird worlds was sort of a, uh, anthology fantasy book with, uh, um, it was, it had used a lot of licensed characters you know like Lucidar from you know the edgar edgar rice burroughs book and stuff well, like the cover that. i had was like a uh, was a uh, john carter type cover so yeah yeah well, if it was john carter but it looked like it so yeah like i said it was sort of like uh if it wasn't directly licensed it was it was meant to look like it was you know emulating some of those characters <clears throat> uh, page 24 um the eternal series now I thought this had been like seriously delayed. Do you guys, do you know? No. Okay. I mean, I feel like they'll probably still crank the comic out so they can have a trade out by the time the movie finally drops. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. That seemed to be the standard operating procedure a few years ago. that They seem to have gotten away from, but. So, and, and it looks like here they have a headshot for uh mockery. Who they have apparently gender swapped that character, I guess, to match the movie. Yeah. Um, now I don't know if that's a movie version cover for the comic, or if that's also uh, the character in the comic as well. So, um, let's see, page uh, twenty-six. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, we're getting a Maestro Warren Pax number one. Uh, again, so this is a follow-up. Uh, sort of sequel series to the Maestro mini series that's going on right now. I'm really glad to see this is coming, especially so quick. Uh, it seems like the yeah, it should be the month after the current mini series wraps up. This one starts. So again, we still have Peter David on here, kind of telling the story of you know evil Hulk Maestro in the future. Uh, this first mini series has been great. I'm really enjoying it. There's a good twist in it as far as far as you know, how he got to where he is. And I think this series, you know, this War Impacts miniseries is just going to be sort of expanding on that, how he kind of conquers the world eventually and that sort of thing. So really enjoying this, really looking forward to, you know, getting more of this. Like, again, if this were a monthly book, I'd get it right now if, they, you know, if the quality was up. Um, if you're a fan of Mark Wade's Empire back in the day, the you know, sort of uh, supervillain who takes over the world but then has to deal with ruling the world you're going to want to pick up the Maestro book from Marvel. Uh, yeah. And probably if you're just a fan of future and perfect, you know, the book that me and Scott talked about a couple weeks ago on here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all sort of prequel to that book. I'm glad to see Peter David getting quite a bit of, you know, yeah. writing gigs at, uh, at Marvel right now. So between this and symbiote Spider-Man and some of the other stuff. So that's good. Uh, my next thing is on 31. Uh, go ahead. OK, so we've got a resolicit for Children of the Atom one. This was actually going back to February. Oh, yeah. This, I year. this was the first issue again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, we've got a lot of uh, apparently new characters are going to be showing up. So it looks like, you know, Gambit's got a sidekick and Nightcrawler's got a sidekick and Cyclops has got a sidekick and Archangel's got a sidekick. And I don't know, Jean Grey, Marvel Girl, I'm guessing, is the other one on the character on the cover. So. May get some new. Uh, we almost certainly get some new characters um, from Children of the Atom number one. Uh, Forty-three. Well, just real quick on uh, thirty-two, we've got the next issue of the Wolverine Black, White, and Blood. 
again, it's kind of a takeoff of the Batman black and white uh, sort of form of storytelling where it's an anthology and uh, sort of like the Harley Quinn uh, black, white, and red that DC is also doing. But uh, I read the first issue really good, just sort of uh, short stories of Wolverine where the only color is red. Uh, but yeah, it seems like it's just a good opportunity, like the Batman book, for just creators to come in, tell a quick good story, and get out. You know, it's black solid. and white aren't colors. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just like you know, you don't have to set up some big long story or event or anything. You just get some better kind of character driven stories out of that. So I'll definitely be picking that up. Anything else before 43? Mm. Oh, just real quick on 36. I just like this uh, cover to X Factor number six, where we have Siren kind of screaming, and her scream is turning into a skull on the cover. I just thought that looked pretty cool. Again, I haven't been reading it. I don't. I, I probably won't pick that up, but it's a cool looking cover. All right, so 43, you got Iron Man number five, written by Christopher Cantwell, uh, who's doing the Doctor Doom series. But this also has a, an alien uh, variant cover for it. And then on page uh, 44, there's an Immortal Hulk um, flatline number one, so a one shot. And I think the most interesting thing about this is that it has a Kevin Nolan variant cover, which we don't get to see a picture of, unfortunately. Um, but that could be good. Uh, page 44. Five, Immortal Hulk 43 gets an alien variant and I can't believe we're down to like the last eight issues of Immortal Hulk <laughs> you know because 43 through 50 you know that's apparently that's apparently it so uh, so what, what, do you, what do you think the next series will be called Scott uh, yeah, yeah it's, I saw your post uh, <laughs> on uh, about that I don't, want, I don't want to steal your thunder so uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think there's some options yeah, they have um, indigestible. indigestible. That was, was that one of yours? I think. Indigestible yeah. would be good. <laughs> um, I think Independent Hulk, where he just kind of goes out on his own, he gets his back. There you go. A good one. Uh, inadvertent Hulk. You know, <laughs> yeah, inadvertent. Can't control the change. Maybe I don't know. Just happens at inopportune times. <laughs> And then you get the incorrigible Hulk where he's just like a little rascal the whole time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Indescribable Hulk where he always yeah. changes into a, a Picasso or Dolly painting or something yeah, like that. Right. <laughs> Page, uh, so. Page, I, I've lost my place. Where am I? We'll, have to, we'll, we'll have to see what, uh, what happens after that. Uh, <laughs> Page 46. Okay. We've got uh, Fantastic Four number 28. Again, I'm still reading this book. Dan Slott's killing it on this book. It's been a great read. His whole run on FF. And we are getting a pretty notable uh, alien variant cover here, I think, oh. where it's a takeoff of Jack Kirby's FF number one, where now it's an alien queen kind of coming up through the street as opposed to one of the Mole Man's monsters. So, But, again, just a, kind of a no-brainer kind of cover there. Page 47, a Avengers number 41 gets an alien variant. Um. Anybody want to talk about the facsimiles on page 48? Well, 354 okay. is part of, it's a U.S. agent, right? Mm -hmm. this is, yes. uh, I don't know, is there, a, is there a title for this story, for the sort of longer arc they did back then, where Cap <sighs> quit being Captain, where Steve quit being Captain America? I Not that I know of, but I'm sure, I'm sure there is. I have them all. I tracked them down. It took me a long time. You know, it was years ago when I was getting it. But well, uh, it's not like he'd never stopped being Captain America before. <laughs> right. But this was, this was a specific instance mm -hmm. and this carried on for quite a while in the book. Yeah. You know, and, and again, this was like what, mid late eighties. Yeah. You know, it was huge storylines like that. Yeah. It was, it was during this timeline that is when he first picked up Mjolnir in Thor 390. So oh, was it? yeah. So it was actually us agent who picks up the, uh, as Steve is us agent who picks up Mjolnir instead of Captain America, Steve. So, Oh, wow. And again, yeah. I'm kind of surprised this wasn't out. This isn't out now because the new U.S. Agent book is out. You know, they've started that new U.S. Agent miniseries. So I'm like, why isn't the facsimile already out? You know, well, Andrew this is probably out because of the the Falcon Winter Soldier TV show. show yeah, that's I think. why so it's was, coming out later. 
Yeah, I think it's more tied to that. Both of those books, I think, are tied to the TV series more right. than to each other. That's true. Uh, page 49, uh, Cap 27, uh, has a variant cover, uh, for Alien, and ta Coates is actually still, still going, so Cap gets his mojo back, according to this one, so, I hope that's not a reference to, uh, Mojo Austin from Powers. Mojo Verse. No. Uh, somebody gets Austin Powers reference. Austin Powers. <laughs> I hope it's not either of those. Let's, let's, let's put it that way. Um, page 51... Uh, this is probably my favorite of the alien variants to Captain Marvel issue 25, um, where we have basically Carol as Ripley, um, carrying around, uh, the, uh, oh gosh, I forgot the name of the cat, um, from alien. And of course she has her own pet cat anyway, but this kind of, you know, brings back that scene. Yeah. Um, I totally didn't even see that variant on this page. I was just looking at the normal cover with Namor here. Yeah, that is a really, that's a really good concept for that variant. Not Namor. It's Namor's son. Oh, is it? Yes. So we talked about that last uh, previous okay. podcast. This is a new character. Um, uh, we were speculating on it was Namor and who. Um, and apparently it's going to be, and I'm probably mispronouncing her name, Marina from Alpha Flight. Because apparently there's an unresolved story plot in like an Avengers book where she lays an egg. <laughs> and they never come back to it. Yeah, boy. So this may be the son of Namor and Marina from Alpha Flight, but we won't oh. know until the until issue twenty four hits the stands. It even tell us then. So, um, let's see. My next thing's on fifty three. Um, why did I have fifty three? Oh, Black Widow does get an alien variant though. Oh, and, and uh, I actually missed it the first time. It was kind of hidden up in the art for the um. For the regular book, so um, so Black Widow gets an alien variant. Yeah, that's a Terry Dodson one there. Is is it Terry Dodson on the alien variant? Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry, I accidentally clicked on the digital version, so it took me to the website. I had to get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so after that, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 56 and 57, looks like we've got Mark Bagley coming back to do art. Uh, I know Patrick Gleason's been on the book. I don't know if these are just fill-ins or what's going on. I don't I think he was in last month's catalog as the artist on the book. Uh, but I'm, I'm a sucker for Mark Bagley's Spider-Man. I'll probably have to pick these up. So. And 58. There's three issues solicited. Did you say oh, 58 yeah, also? Yeah, nope. 58 is another one. Yeah, I guess they got three that month. Jeez. Well, <laughs> I guess uh, is there I guess is there five Wednesdays in, uh, in uh, January? I'm not 5th, sure. 12th, 1926? No. So how are they doing that? I don't know, but Bagley is doing the uh, Alien variant, too, on one of them, on 57, it looks like. And then Miles Morales, issue uh, issue 22, gets an Alien variant. And then on page 63, uh, Thor gets an Alien uh, variant. Be interesting to see how his hammer holds up to the Alien acid, since he's uh, cracking skulls on one of the aliens there. Yeah, Yeah, this was one of the covers I saw online. And it just, I mean, I'm not speaking to the art quality, just sort of the theme. It just really feels mm. like something your buddy would have drawn in junior high during school. You know, like, yeah, Thor's hammer's going through the alien's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm not saying, you know, it's a childish drawing. No. It's still very well executed here. But, and it's Daniel Warren Johnson. So, again, that's sort of par for the course with him, with uh, Murder Falcon and some of the other work he does. So, I think, yeah, he's the guy you get to draw that cover. But uh, just really kind of has that vibe to it. Page 64, I'm kind of digging this uh, Shang-Chi alien uh, variant for the final issue of that limited series. He's got the high kick going on. Oh, well, so, Shang-Chi, I didn't know Shang-Chi was a miniseries. Yeah. Really? Yep. And that's weird to say that he's a miniseries and they've got a one shot this month. It's just like uh, that kind of make a lot of sense to that me. That seems but. like a bad move, Marvel. Yeah, especially they 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 put out a release date <laughs> for that movie because it wrapped up uh, yeah. filming. So. And it was, is it even next year? I'm not sure, but I feel like you could definitely keep doing a Shang-Chi book till it comes out at least. I would, I would yeah. think so. Uh, 67. Um, I don't know, you guys, either one of you going to talk about this one? I, w- I was going to bring it up. Um, Go ahead. Uh, again, I haven't been reading Marvel Star Wars books anymore, but we're getting the first issue of the High Republic book. And again, this is just sort of a big push 
within the, the sort of Star Wars uh, brand right now. There's going to be some more High Republic stuff later in the catalog. Uh, but again, this is sort of, you know, so far since Disney's had Star Wars, a lot of the sort of mandate to the licensors has been it has to promote or tie into some other event like a movie they've got going on. You haven't really gone wild with the sort of timeline and different things that we used to get, like with the Dark Horse comics and the novels and things like that. A lot of what we've got has been tying into some of the movies or like a game or, you know, at least tied into something that was already pre-existing within Star Wars. Uh, so now we're going to getting, um, you know, this sort of new era of, you know, sort of like when the Jedis were, you know, what Obi-Wan describes in the first film, you know, where they are sort of the law and, you know, they are, you know, the heroes of the galaxy and that sort of thing. So, um we're going to, you know, and the, they're telling this across multiple media. There are going to, you know, novels coming out too and things like that. But uh, yeah, I'll probably pick this one up just to see how it is. Uh, I think it's interesting that, you know, we're kind of diverging with Star Wars a little bit, which we haven't gotten lately. Again, Dark Horse had some really good comics that came out of that. Um, like the Legacy book and Dawn of the Jedi from back in the day. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what they do with this, how much they're allowed to kind of play with this. You know, again, it shouldn't tie in directly to anything at this point. So hopefully they can just go wild with it. and We get some really cool, you know, sort of ideas and stories out of it. And you're going to have lots of new characters introduced in this book. For sure. So, yeah. So you might want to pick up the first several issues of this just for all the new character introductions that are going to that are going to show up in the Star Wars universe, because obviously pretty much everybody in that book is going to be a new character. Yeah. Um, my next thing's not till 83. Uh, well, on 75, kind of going into the merchandise section here, we've got the, uh, what are they calling it? Marvel movie premiere collection, Logan statue. And so this is sort of a Hugh Jackman, Logan statue from the movie where he's kind of wearing the suit. Uh, I think it's a really good likeness on there. Um, it's kind of a nice looking statue. And uh, below that, we have the Marvel Select Human Torch action figure, where it's a translucent red uh, Human Torch figure with this big sort of flame base for him, and he's got some fireballs he's throwing. But it also comes with an interchangeable Golden Age Human Torch head to put on there. So I thought that was kind of neat, sort of the robot Human Torch from back in the day, because that's the only way you're going to get a figure of that version, I'm sure. So I thought that was neat they were throwing that in. Uh, page 80, we've got the uh, Ven Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, again, I'm a sucker for Mark Bagley's Spider-Man, and uh, so that's like what a lot sort of early appearances of Venom here, some of the early miniseries. It's got the Lethal Protector miniseries, which that original book just skyrocketed the last few mm -hmm. years, so many issues of that. Uh, it's pretty pricey to pr pick those up originally now. And again, some of these other miniseries, a lot of those random Venom miniseries from back in the day have just kind of gone up in price over time, so they're all pretty pricey now. And uh, after that, on page 81, we're getting the Untold Tales of Spider-Man Omnibus. Um, again, this was kind of Kurt Busiek's book that was sort of telling sort of retro Spider-Man stories, and they're kind of set in the past. Uh, what I really like in this, though, was the um, should be the annual from 96 which was uh, Mike Alred and Joe Sinnott telling a uh, Spider-Man Fantastic Four storyline in that. And that was a really good sort of standalone issue. I've got it. I've got it signed by, you know, a few of the guys that worked on it now. And uh, it's really just a fun story. And it's got, like, old-school villain bios in it and that sort of thing, like sort of pin-up pages like Marvel used to do back in the 60s. And there's a in the back, there's a recipe for Aunt May's wheat cakes in it. <laughs> so... Yeah, just a really good, probably probably one of my favorite Spider-Man stories is in there. And again, Mike Howard and Joe Sinnott, you know, working together. You don't get that. You know, you're definitely not getting it anymore. But yeah, just a really cool issue in there. And I think, you know, I don't think that's been reprinted since they published that annual. But I think that's it for me. Okay, so page, page 83, 83, we have, we have the so many so many <laughs> the complete the Kirby, Kirby Ford romance, romance. hardcover Hard cover. book. Um, there's a direct market only version of that, and uh, which is kind of an odd combination for war and romance into the into the same uh, hardcover. 
but um, you know, it's a lot of Kirby's, you know, non-hero work um, at Marvel. And then on page 90, we have the second volume of Dr. Doom uh, from Christopher Cantwell. I've read the first volume, haven't read anything in the second volume, but the first volume was really solid. So if you like Dr. Doom, that's something to consider picking up. Yeah, that book that book is still solid. I've been reading it. It was one of the books I was bummed out that we weren't getting when everything was shut down. Uh, yeah, it's definitely worth picking up. Again, I'm getting a, I'm getting a lot of Marvel villain books right now too. <laughs> like I've got the Doctor Doom. I was getting Black Hat. Looks like that's starting back up. I'll get that again. I picked up the Juggernaut miniseries they're doing. That first issue of that was good. It's got Juggernaut working for Damage Control, which makes sense. You know why not? But uh, yeah, I don't know. Marvel's just doing really good villain stuff right now. All right, we ready for yeah. the big book? I think so. Yeah. All right, well, page 24. As much as we've been talking about Marvel and DC, we don't touch on half the stuff in those books and even yeah. a quarter of the stuff in the big book. So if you want to get a full idea of what's going on, be sure and pick up a copy of Previews. Uh, Mike usually has extras at the store. Um, yeah. And again, order, orders are due November 18th. So if you hear something uh, that we're talking about that you want to order or something else in the catalog, you want a special order, let Mike... No, by uh, the 18th, just so we can get Mike, it. No, no. That's right. <laughs> All right, page 30. Okay, go ahead. All right, well, we got Ha Ha, number one. So this is a new anthology book um, from Image from uh, Ice Cream Man creator W. Maxwell Print Prince. And, uh, well, I guess if you want to be creeped out by clowns, then this is the book for you. So. Uh, yeah, it, it's. Kind of creepy looking, but and, and I've seen the Joker movie, so <laughs> <laughs> and they do kind of almost feel like you get a complete like one of the anthology stories, uh, you know, here on the in the preview from thirty one to you know thirty three. It's a clown talking about how hey how it pays the bills and then the power goes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and I know uh, Zoe Thorgood, an artist I follow online. She's just announced the other day she's doing the second issue of this, and I think her cover is up for that now. But yeah, and again, this description here lists like uh, Roger Langridge is going to be doing one of the issues, who you know is kind of doing the Bill and Ted or Doom miniseries right now. But again, did Fred the Clown and has written you know Thor the Mighty Avenger and that kind of stuff. So and did the Popeye book for IDW and Muppets for Boom. So yeah, just really you know, talented guy. I'll definitely be picking up whatever issue he does of this. My next thing's on page 50. Well, right after that, uh, again, with image, we've got rain like hammers. Number one from a uh, Brandon Graham. Uh, it looks like this guy is in this sort of uh, floating sort of mobile city here. Just looks like sort of a fun sci-fi kind of thing. I've really liking the art on these preview pages. This really sparse sort of style. Um, that kind of just tells me right there. Like, I don't even need to know what this is about. I really like the look of this book. <laughs> so I'll at least check out this first issue, give it a go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything else for a while after that. So Okay, so page 50, we have Family Tree issue 12. This is the final issue of that Jeff Lemire series. Um, I assume so we can spend more time on Sweet Tooth. And then uh, page uh, 51, issue 7, uh, Firepower, starts a new um, story arc. Um, I think I've still only read the first three issues of that series. So yeah, I need to... As we're recording, the new issue just came out this week, too, and it is good. Okay. What issue number is that? I think it's five. Five? Okay. So I'm just, well, I'm just a couple behind then. So I'm not as far behind as I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just, just read it this morning. Good time. Cool. All right. So now, are you guys on? I mean, since I'm I'm looking online, I didn't get a chance to get the catalog. So, uh, are you past image now? Or because I heard you mention in the, image, you're in image. But you mm -hmm. mentioned dark uh, the Jeff Lemire stuff, uh, Black Camera. I thought that's Dark Horse, but no, that was, that was a up. Family Tree. That's a different topic. Oh, different okay, stuff. okay. He's got stuff all well, over the place. He's not loyal to any publisher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple in image if, if I can, and that's black magic. I haven't picked it up yet in single issues, but I plan on 
uh, getting the first couple volumes of the uh, trades, uh, Ruck and, and Nicola Scott. And I think that everything I've heard about it's been is really good. So uh, I don't I really don't know anything that that Greg Ruck has done. It's been bad. So uh, then on the Department of Truth, I have picked up the first issue of that. The second issue isn't out yet. And like we spoke, we talked about this a few episodes ago that, it, you know, it's the art that might kind of throw people off. And it is something you have to overcome. But um, after the first after the intro or the first the first few prologue pages, the art got a little bit better and more or less abstract or, or stylized. So uh, number five is out uh, with this catalog. and. Uh, I'm going to keep picking it up and then there's go ahead. No, no, it's, I was going to move on to the next comment. uh, Department of truth has also been uh, under some heavy bidding apparently for the rights to that. Um, And apparently it's some, they're saying that some pretty big companies that are going to be affiliated with that uh, property. So I think we even mentioned that as a buy in one of our previous uh, previews episodes. So yep. if you picked up a few extra copies, then uh, that might be a, a good book. I got my copies. I'm getting prepped to send in the CGC myself. So, oh, that's that's good to hear. Then I mean, it's it's great concept, and it's nice to see James Tynan get get some um, good street cred on that. I mean, he's been a pretty mainstream DC guy. He's done a few other things, like I think the Woods for Image. Um, but and then there's one that's uh, completely. It's just just speaks to me. I love uh amelia Earhart and i i i love the uh, idea of uh, mixing fantasy and, and fiction with with uh, historical figures and there's a, a trade paperback of a series called elsewhere where um it kind of tells you know quote unquote what really happened to amelia Earhart when she disappeared uh over the pacific so um those are just those are the only three in image i wanted to bring up and not that i know anything about elsewhere yet but i'm I'm very much intrigued by it. Dark Horse? Yep. Uh, I don't have anything of 86. So. Okay, so page 62, we've got Crimson Flower. It's a four-issue series from uh, Matt Kent. Uh, he typically comes up with some really, really good ideas. And uh, so here's a four-issue series, not a huge commitment. Um, decent. It's very stylized artwork, um, <laughs> I guess to put it mildly. But uh, it's probably a little crazy, so something to something to consider adding to your pull list. Uh, 64, uh, we've got some, I guess with uh, Disney, going to be having some Avatar movies coming up in the very near future. We're starting to get some comics for that. So Avatar, the next uh, Shadow, four-issue series, um, you know, for the licensing-minded people. And then I don't have anything until 86. Okay, yeah, me neither. All right. You guys think from Dark Horse, uh, Mike? No, I sure don't. All right. Dan, you said you had 86? Yeah, so 86, uh, Dark Horse is doing a line of face masks now. Mm -hmm. You know that game. Uh, So we have a Hellboy and Umbrella Academy ones. Uh, (laughs) And then I had to read the listing to see what this was because it is The Mask from, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the comic The Mask in the Jim Carrey movie. But it's just his mouth and you know a green face so i wasn't sure what that was i was almost thinking like green goblin or something at first (laughs) when i saw it but that's what it is please note uh, these are not medical grade masks no (laughs) (laughs) uh 158 is my next thing Uh, let's see so uh in idw on page 116 i've talked about them on here before i'm going to talk about it again We've got the uh, Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Universe Collection. And so this is collecting all the uh, sort of uh, Mirror Universe Star Trek Next Generation miniseries they did starting a couple years ago that was written by Scott and David Tipton. Um, Again, if you're a fan of Next Generation, pick these up. It's just, you know, they never did the Mirror Universe on the TV show. I know there were some novels and other things that went into that, but uh, these are just really solid stories. Uh, Just, you know that version of you know the next generation universe just really good and you know they were all, they all kind of hold up um let's see my next thing is to 194 i'll go ahead and throw this out on page 126 okay. uh, so you have red sonia crossing over with the project superpowers uh characters yeah 
I guess, you know, Dynamite is desperate for <laughs> something to have Red Sonja uh, do. And I bet you see the Project Superpowers in Vampirella after this storyline uh, wraps up. So uh, just so they have, you know, again, something else to keep doing with those two characters that they have a license for. Right. Um, 158, um, we have Abbott 1973. Uh, this is from Boom. Um, this is a follow-up uh, miniseries from the from Abbott. Uh, basically, she's a, a news journalist in the not early 1970s, um, and it's a real so- the the first uh, series was really really solid. So I'm looking forward to picking up uh, the second one as well. And you can uh, if you missed out on the first one, the, the trade is available uh, to be ordered. You got a page of a. Uh, of a uh, you know art and story here and uh, you can tell it's you know the 70s because they're smoking so <laughs> <laughs> actually got two pages oh three pages of art so on uh, a one, 194 uh from aftershock again just bring this book up again kaiju score number three is coming out uh got a got group of guys pulling off a heist during the middle of like a kaiju attack again the first issue's not out yet but I don't see how I'm looking forward to this book. I think it's a cool concept. I don't see how this doesn't get turned into something. You know, how do you not adapt this into a movie or a TV show or, you know, something. <laughs> so it just seems like a no brainer to me. Backing up to page uh, 172. We got the fourth issue of Dune house of trades from boom. And then on page uh, 173, you've got the second issue for the expanse, uh, which that, Amazon series will be starting really soon um, for season five of that. Uh, page 179, uh, The Red Mother is in its final issue, issue 12, also from Boom. And then what page were you on, Dan? I'm playing catch uh, up here. I don't have anything until 202. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm on 202 too, but on 188, uh, we have a new uh, Terry Moore book, a serial. So we have right. Zoe. Uh, Zoe was a uh, demon possessed girl, and I don't know that she aged uh, as part of Rachel Rising, which is my favorite of the Terry Moore books. So we had this story where uh, I, somebody, I, I, I probably should just read this, but uh, Zoe discovers her childhood friend as the latest victim in a string of murders. And Zoe's going to be, who was a creepy character to begin with, is now going to be out uh, searching for a serial killer. It doesn't say this is a. I assume it's an ongoing because it doesn't list uh, uh, how many issues this is going to be. Uh, but it's Terry Moore. So it's, uh, you know, again, going back to the Rachel rising story. So I think it's going to be good. On a 202 from Ahoy, we're getting the wrong earth night and day. Number one, Tom Payer and uh, Jamal Eigel coming back. It's, uh, we've had another wrong earth series, but this is basically the sequel to the original and uh, this time we're going to get Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man kind of meeting up and facing off, it looks like. Really looking forward to this. I uh, really enjoyed that first miniseries, so this is definitely something I'm picking up. Definitely want to see where they go with this story and kind of what they set up at the end of the original miniseries. Yeah, I'm picking this up, too. Uh, 235. Uh, we've got a book... Uh, looks like a, a graphic novel called HSE Human Stock Exchange Volume One, uh, where it looks like the economy it's the future, the economy has collapsed, and apparently there is a uh, stock market where they uh, sort of trade people now, or individuals are listed on a market. Uh, so it says it's the first volume of a painfully plausible trilogy. So again, it sounds like an interesting idea. I'll probably pick this up, see where this goes. Uh, you know, obviously the creators have more to the story if they're already announcing two more parts for a book that's not out yet. On uh, 237 from uh, Del Rey, we have a novel here of Star Wars, The High Republic, Light of the Jedi. And uh, so, again, this is tying into this sort of larger push with the High Republic like we were talking about with the Marvel catalog. And uh, this book is written by Charles Soule, you know, who writes a lot of comics, too, so... I can't imagine that doesn't tie in somehow to some of the other stuff they're doing. And uh, after that, on page 238, we uh, have a Star Wars High Republic Test of Courage hardcover. And I think this may be like a, like a younger readers or like a teen book, maybe it looks like. 
uh, sort of like a graphic novel. I guess, again, bringing in some more characters into the sort of High Republic world there. Uh, let's see. Next thing's not for a while. All right, so 248. Uh, this is from Fantagraphics Books. We have Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith. Now, according to the you know the info here, this says he created this over a 35-year period. So um, the former Barry Smith, now Barry Windsor Smith, uh, apparently this is like his his uh, magnum opus, I guess. So um, 40 bucks for a hardcover, 360 pages, black and white. It is uh, eight by 11, so it's oversized. But if you're a fan of Barry Windsor Smith, here I've, you always, go. I've always felt like Barry Windsor Smith's magnum opus is the cover to Solar Man of the Atom number ten, <laughs> which was the black cover that he had the gall to sign his name to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything until like three twenty eight. I think I'm actually done with side one. So. Okay. So uh, starting on three twenty eight, going into what is it, page three thirty? It looks like. Uh, so they have an emphasis, this uh, catalog on, like, sort of DIY. And so we have a lot of art instruction books here, you know, kind of geared towards comics. Uh, we've got the Bern Hogarth uh, anatomy books. Uh, we've got some of the Stan Lee books. And we've got the Scott McCloud understanding comics and uh, making comics, reinventing comics. And then the various Will Eisner books. Again, I have I've got various ones of these I've picked up over the years. But you know, if you're an aspiring artist or writer, you know, for comics, these are things to check out. You know, it's sort of like how it's done for a lot of this stuff. Um, and again, some of these books are decades old, but you know, they still hold up. The lessons are still important that they're teaching here. Uh, I feel like it's something every creator should have. You know, at least a few of these in their back pocket. Uh, I think the only other thing I have on this side of the catalog is kind of going into the apparel section. Uh, graffiti has uh, a Three Jokers shirt here with uh, Jason Faybox covers to the miniseries, each fe featuring one of the different Jokers on there. And, yeah, that's it for me. So I'm going to flip over now. I, I have a couple things, Dan. Okay. Well, too bad. Uh, We're flipping over, Mike. <laughs> I already said too late. <laughs> All right. I'll just read it upside down then. <laughs> I just uh, two. It's just basically two tomorrows uh, publications. The uh, the issue for Alter Ego uh, number one sixty eight is a uh, it highlights Paul Norris, who's the co creator of Aquaman, along with uh, Mort Weisinger, and uh, anybody that likes the really old stuff like I do, you know, the Golden Age stuff. Alter Ego and and Tomorrow's really you can't go wrong. I don't pick up every issue, uh, but I do pick the ones up that catch my attention. And then uh, along with that, there's a uh, back issue number 120. Back issue is sort of like the more Bronze Age forward um, version of Alter Ego. And they're highlighting the Legion of Superheroes by Steve Lytle. Um, so anybody that likes history of comics and reading about how they were created, um, I always recommend these. And it's a great company to support, too. Yeah. So tomorrow's. Real quick, while we're still talking about back issue, it's not in this catalog. I think it'll be coming up, but I just saw online where they have an issue coming up that looks like it's featuring Wally West, and it looks oh. like it looks like a Mike Waringo cover to me, but I haven't seen it before, so I don't know if this was a commission they got to put on the cover or what. But it, to me, it looked like new Mike Waringo art. That'd um, be nice. Again, I can't swear to that. Don't take my word on that necessarily, but you know, we'll see when it comes out or when it's in the catalog. But Again, kind of disappointing what they're doing with Wally West now, so I'll probably pick up this issue just to get some better Wally West feels out of it, if nothing else. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, you can't go, wrong, can't go wrong with two Morrows in general. No, you can't. I mean, really, and for 10 bucks for that magazine, man, you get so much content. I mean, you're going to spend a couple, three days reading through all of it, and it's just, it's just yeah. engrossing, so highly recommended. Yeah, and again, I think they resolicited what I think what was it called, the Batcave Companion, not too long ago. And again, yeah. I got that book back when it came out. Definitely, if you're a Batman fan, pick that one up. It's just got good interviews with old guys working on the book who don't work for DC anymore, and they don't care. They'll tell you <laughs> what's going on. They're honest right. with opinions of everything. It's a really entertaining read. Yeah. Uh, so going over to the other side now, the catalog, uh, page 14 from General Giant. 
we're getting the Star Wars Dr. Aphra uh, one six scale mini bust. The character that, you know, won't go away, you know, is still standing somehow. <laughs> you know, again, I enjoyed her for the right of her book, but yeah, I don't know if she's actually catching on more or if she's supposed to get a Disney character. Plus series, I think. You know, so we'll see. And again, and then right after that, we've got the uh, Mandalorian uh, Beskar armor half scale bust. So again, and that's, you know, that's back on. New season of that. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? I'm heading to 107, so. Okay. I'm skipping over something here. What is it? Oh, on page uh, 33, there's the uh, Godzilla Aurora 1 500th scale model. Um, this is uh, sort of a reissue of an old Godzilla statue or model kit where pieces of him glow. Uh, glow in the dark, and uh, we have that in the store now. Mike just got these in the other day, so if you're interested in that, you don't got to wait. Just come by Campus Comics now and pick one up because we've got them. Yeah, and Mike is super excited about those model kits. So oh yeah. If you yeah. wanna, if you wanna get Mike talking, just talk to him yeah. about model kits. Or just, just come check out. House. Yeah, check out the uh, old uh, neon fluorescent Aurora model kits he's been putting together. The monsters, they look really cool. He's got a few of them done now. On uh, page forty-one. Uh, from uh, the Super 7, we've got the Metropolis Maria uh, reaction figure. And again, sort of the three and three quarter scale figure they do, but this is a vac metallized version of the of the robot. So if you, you know, you got action figures in the 80s and you saw those really cool chrome apps they had on them, that's what that is. So that's what this figure will be, this sort of cool kind of chrome, you know, metal on there. And uh, let's see. And uh, from Funko, you know, in their huge pop section they always have every month, we were getting some uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia figures of uh, Charlie as the Day Man and uh, Frank as the Troll and Mac as the Nightman from uh, <laughs> the uh, Nightman episode. And let's see, what else do we got? So much stuff with this catalog, and again, we're only touching on you know a fraction of it, just because we'd be here for a couple of days talking about everything. On a 110, we've got the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Portrait Series pins, and so these are pins of the four turtles. Uh, they're just really like these designs, though. It's more like the uh, 2012 cartoon, the CG cartoon uh, model of them here, uh, but they're just sort of a each character in sort of an action pose with a turtle shell behind them that's, you know, the color of the character's bandana. So just sort of neat looking pins, and, you know, they've got all four of them there. Back on page 107, if you ever said to yourself, man, I really need a Dundee to throw through my 13-inch plasma television, then <laughs> you can get one. So they're offering the Office Dundee Award Trophy Replica for twenty nine ninety nine. dollars So <laughs> you too can have your own Dundee. Let's see. I think that's all I've got for this side. Yeah, I, the, on a what page is it? Oh, they have a okay. It's on page uh, one fourteen. They have this Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four card game. Uh, it looks awful. I mean, literally, it's a card <laughs> that says "Action Sprint" or "Action Lasso." I mean, these just look terrible. Um, I, I think they just Cryptozoic just kind of. Uh, probably gave up and just said we need to get something licensed out fast and then the the movie got delayed and they were like oh i guess we could have had more time but uh looks awful but who knows maybe there's more strategy to it than what you get from one word on a card so yeah that's all i got for um uh, blanks so we got uh red sonya superpowers one mighty morphin uh, number three power rangers number three um, let's see. Future State Wonder Woman number one is going to have a blank. Uh, okay. Planet Comics, which is one we didn't talk about, they actually have a, a package of red, white, and black uh, covers um, that you can buy that just say Planet Comics, and they're actually 24 page empty books. So mm. you can either design your own sci fi related comic, um, or you can uh, have. What I've done with some of the horror ones is have artists, you know, do sketches in the horror ones. So I'm going to pick up some of these planet ones just for random sci-fi related uh, related ones. So um, I guess that's it on the blanks. Not a lot. 
Yeah, I'm surprised there's not more future state ones. Yeah, be and, easy enough. And well, I guess with you know Wonder Woman being the only like new character, um, and there may be more that I'm just missing. So yeah. Um, I, do we even want to try to pick a a, a, a investment selection? I mean, there are so many. I'm just gonna say future. Uh, state. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Buy all of future state. Yeah. You never know. Pick up Dark Knights, Death Metal Seven if you can. Yeah. Uh, you know, nonstop Spider Man number one is supposed to have some new villains in it. I got a whole bunch of things flagged for, um, um, you know, Immortal Hulk the one shot. You know, it may be one of those books that people don't know is coming out and they skip over and have to go back and pick up. Um, I think the biggest one is potentially going to be the one future state book. So, gosh, I feel like that, I thought I had some more marked here, but I guess that's it. I don't know. Mike, you got anything to add to the investment picks? I was just going to – my pick was going to be uh, Death Metal number seven. Okay. So. <laughs> Is that even solicited in this catalog? No, it's not. It was last time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I'm sorry. That, that, that's the that's, – okay, that doesn't count then. So any of the future state then. I was thinking uh, because it's – Tied directly to Future State. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I'm pretty excited for The Wrong Earth coming back. I, you know, think that'll be a good book. You know, as far as like what I'm looking forward to reading. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for Serial because, um, like I said, Rachel Rising yeah. is my favorite Terry Moore story. So I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, with some of those characters. So I think that's what I'm probably looking most forward to out of this. And maybe those Legion of Substitute Heroes showing up in in future state legion so mike's looking forward to that riley ross from art mm-hmm. legion we all know that can't wait well i think that'll be it for this time uh just you know remind everybody you know if you heard something that uh, we're talking about that you want to get come by the store and uh, tell mike no that you know by the 18th what you're looking for or you know get your own copy of the previews play along at home again there's so much stuff in here that we just don't have the time to talk about uh, you know there's probably good indie books that are slipping by we don't even know about you know just because there's so much stuff anymore um but yeah come by the store uh again you know we kind of got the winter hours going right on right now so it's tuesday through thursday or through saturday i mean 11 to 5 uh, and, you know, you can find us on Facebook or Twitter, or if you want to call the store before you come in, it's 618-457-6011. And, uh, Scott, where can people find you? You can find me at burgacomics.com, B-U-R-G comics.com, eBay, Facebook, Instagram, all those places. And if you're listening to this after November 18th, it's like, you know, the 19th through the 20th or whatever, you probably still got a few days to get your order in with Mike. Uh, that's just kind of like the order date for customers to get their orders in. The stores have a couple of extra days, so uh, you may be able to squeeze something in even after the 18th. Yeah, but again, with everything going on with distribution mm-hmm. right now, and what we just saw happen with the uh, last Ronin, the Turtles book, yep. you know, sooner the better, you know, on everything, mm-hmm. you know, just as, you know, as a rule there. Mike, where can people find you? They can't. Okay. <laughs> Mike Atchison5 on Twitter. <laughs> and this is Dan Brown. You can find me online at Detective651. And again, the numbers, uh, they're not spelled out. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, my T Public store. And again, you know, holidays are coming up. Going to have some new stuff up on there. Going to have some sales. And uh, you can find me Saturdays at uh, Campus Comics. And we'll see you next time. Scott just went full green on my screen for some reason. Oh, well, you're still looking okay, so. All right. Well, I guess start when you're ready, Dan.
quick screenshot of green scott <laughs> am i still green on yours yeah it, and it's like you're moving around and it's like erasing the green and the captain america background is coming in behind you huh it's really I I, maybe it's the way it's reading your virtual background here i'll turn off my i'll turn off the background i don't know if that's gonna <laughs> You're still green, but I'm the background's in color. Oh, there it now popped off. Okay. That's so weird. weird. And we now have 74 downloads from Ireland. Huh. <laughs> Ireland, man. They, Ireland, yeah. I wonder, wonder what they find appealing about us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, would get, I would get that on my WordPress, too, you know, back when I was still doing that. It's just like these random... Ones yeah. are like fun in the Middle East and stuff like that. <laughs> I want to. Hey, Dan. I, when I went to Utah, I was uh, I got some of the got the things that I ordered from your from your uh, your store your oh, designs. Yeah. I got the Arkham Arkham Life mask yeah. <laughs> and the uh, Ambush Bug T shirt. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah, I was. Scott just went full green on my screen for some reason. Oh, well, you're still looking okay, so. All right, well, I guess start when you're ready, Dan. Quick screenshot of green, Scott. <laughs> Am I still green on yours? Yeah, and it's like you're moving around, and it's like erasing the green, and the Captain America background is coming in behind you. Huh. It's really, oh maybe it's the way it's reading your virtual background. Hey, I'll turn off my, I'll turn off the background. I don't know if that's going to. You're still green. <laughs> the background's in color. Oh, there it popped off. Okay. That's so weird. And we now have 74 downloads from Ireland. Huh. <laughs> Ireland, man. They, I, wonder, I wonder what they find appealing about. <laughs> yeah, I, would get, I would get that on my WordPress, too. You know, back when I was still doing that. It's just like these random ones yeah. like fun in the Middle East and stuff like that. <laughs> I wanna, hey, Dan, when I went to Utah, I, was, uh, I got some of the, got the things I ordered from your, from your, uh, your store, your oh, designs. Yeah. I got the Arkham, Arkham Life mask <laughs> and the uh, Ambush Bug t-shirt. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah, I was...